you. Um, thank you again, Angie, for inviting me. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a privilege to participate in your conference. Uh, I've been doing this for many years and I've seen how uh, you have brought many people together to understand how mindfulness uh, and self-care is a very important part in all our lives, whether it's at work or in our own personal lives. Uh, and today, uh, this year, uh, it's, um, I thought I'd bring a little bit about uh, uh, finding joy in, in the work, because I think the reality is, I just saw a stats recent, statistics recently that suggest that we, uh, human beings in this planet, spend more than 70% of our, uh, our waking time, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, engaged in some kind of work. Uh, and that's very high. I think it's, 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 it's the same in Singapore as well. Uh, we spend a lot, most of our day uh, working. Um, so um, let me just try and um, talk about, you know, why we want to talk about focusing this work we do. Because really, I think um, in as much as I uh, uh, um, experience joy in a lot of the work that I do, um, I do know that it is sometimes a challenge for many of us today. Uh, the challenges that we face, I think um, the first thing really is, um, you know, even before uh, COVID turned up in Singapore, um, we were feeling that basically it was difficult. Uh, the workplace in Singapore was getting more complex, many more uh, um, technologies being introduced. Uh, there were more uh, complex processes. Uh, indeed, sometimes we found that the... the um, Business that businesses that we were engaging in <clears throat> was unstable or had difficulties in terms of uh, uh, growth, and so uh, people were starting to feel that you know coming to work was uh, a bit of a trouble or burdensome, uh, and so you know these are just recent articles, and of course COVID uh, amplified the effect. Many people felt that you know coming to work they couldn't find that meaning in the work that they wanted to do anymore, so these are just a couple of articles talking about even in healthcare. You know, where doctors and nurses, uh, when they started out to be uh, healthcare professionals, the last thing they thought they would be doing would be fighting an infectious disease uh, and, and uh, being made to work in, uh, in areas that they hadn't anticipated uh, was very challenging. Uh, and the rest of us, uh, many of us ended up working from home. Uh, and that's, again, something that we never thought that we would be wanting to do because we felt that we wanted a... Uh, uh, natural uh, separation between our personal lives and our work lives. And suddenly we found that, you know, um, our colleagues and our bosses were all <laughs> in the Zoom in our, in, our, in our living room or in our, in our bedroom sometimes. Uh, and it was very difficult to um, find the boundaries. And again, uh, causing people to feel a lot of uh, emotional distress and, and displacement. I wanted to just say that, you know, actually, it's not something unique to Singapore. Um, uh, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, work has been changing over the years, uh, all over the world. Uh, and, um, you know, even in, in various studies uh, uh, done by HBR have shown that, you know, uh, in, in many industries, uh, there's a high uh, degree of uh, employees that are um, um, not... Uh, fully engaged at the work uh, and uh, risk of burnout. And uh, again, uh, you know, again, when the same situation with, with uh, coronavirus, COVID in this world, again, uh, everywhere, uh, work has been disrupted. Uh, people have had to do new things uh, and they felt very displaced. Um, so I thought, you know, we should talk a little bit about how do we find back the joy that we used to have Okay. And, um, and um, this article from Harvard Business Review talks about uh, th that when we experience joy or happiness uh, or sense of satisfaction, can I just say that, you know, when I talk about joy, it's not, it's not a, a fleeting moment of happiness. You know, I know we have a good laugh sometimes, something funny happens and we suddenly feel happy. Joy, I think, you know, I hope uh, all my, my the participants will, will agree with me, is, is a deeper meaning than that. It's a sense of well-being, it's, it's a, a sense of happiness that is prolonged, it's a deeper sense, it's not just a, a momentary feeling. Uh, and most, many studies, uh, psychological studies have shown that, you know, uh, it has got several aspects when it comes to joy in the work. Uh, it has to do with the sense of harmony, that you know uh, what your role is uh, and what the role of your team members are, 
Uh, and then there's another part which is about impact, which is about, again, uh, understanding what your contributions are, that you're doing something that is actually meaningful rather than, you know, I don't know, doing some administrative process that ends up not being used at all. And that would be found that, you know, you find that that's really, really uh, uh, without impact and can be quite devastating. Uh, and um, again, your role in the organization should be clear uh, and uh, acknowledgement that people do recognize that you are there, <laughs> you contribute, and you're not just a, a, a faceless employee uh, that you know comes and goes and no one knows that you're there. I think it was an article recently in the papers, local papers, that says that you know when you are working from home, you become um, uh, invisible and people don't seem to see you. One quick tip uh, is I suggest that when you do work from home and you're invited to a meeting, do switch on your camera. People can see you and they realize that you're there. It's good for you. It's good for others too, okay? Um, you know, impact, I just wanted to get back to this, com this concept of impact. There's always this famous story. I'm sure you've heard it many, many times, but I think it's worth repeating a bit about how uh, President Kennedy visited uh, the space uh, agency, the NASA, uh, and he was looking at the work that was being prepared for the, the uh, mission to the moon. And he came across uh, the janitor, the cleaner, uh, who was sweeping. And um, he asked him, so uh, what's your job like? Uh, what are you doing? And I, we all know the famous answer. Uh, and that janitor said that, you know, I'm here um, putting a man on the moon. Uh, he didn't say I'm cleaning this corridor to make it clean. Uh, he was doing that, but because he kept the corridor clean, he would make that space a, a healthy space for the team to work, and they would be able to get on with their mission and put a man on the moon. And he could see that impact, and he felt that his role was being recognized, and he knew it. Uh, and I'm sure he had been told that that's what you do. You're not just cleaning the, the floors in this, in this corridor, in this building. You are helping. Your role is critical because if you don't, if we have a, an environment that is unsafe or unclean and we cannot work in it, we can't do this. So your job is critical. Now, this is a quick uh, segue, but really the idea is you, we must feel that impact. Okay. And... Uh, so back to this current situation that we are all in, right? So um, I think we first have to acknowledge uh, that there, were, there has been a gap uh, created because of this 18 months of uh, COVID-19. Um, on another occasion, I've talked about the opportunities, but today I will talk about the, um, the disruptions that it has caused uh, our daily lives uh, because of the need for the various uh, restrictions and uh, uh, safe distance measure, measures that we've had to observe uh, has been disrupted. We can't, we couldn't do the things that we used to do. Definitely social gathering, team bonding activities. And uh, this has affected the workplace. I, I hope, I think many of you probably had, you know, lunches and went out together with colleagues. Uh, part of the highlight of work, right, for many of us, uh, we've been told that interactions should be kept at a minimum. Um, the organization I work in as well, I mean, even if it's medical, apart from seeing patients directly face-to-face, -face, all our meetings are now uh, online. Uh, and um, at least online, we don't have to wear a mask, right? Because when we meet each other <laughs> in the corridors, we're all masked up. Uh, and then again, people working from home uh, feel that people don't realize that they're still there and working. And, you know, generally the idea about, about uh, the working hours has, has increased. So this is an interesting survey I show you on the slide here that um, if I asked you, and I'm going to ask you in a while, uh, if you expect to feel joy in your work, uh, many people do expect their work to return some level of satisfaction and joy to them, 90%. And then when we, there was a poll that asked people, so actually, do you feel the joy? It was only 37%. So you can see this joy gap, if you can see my, my mouse, it's 53%. Uh, the question of course in this talk is recognizing it uh, and can we do something about it? So I do have a, a poll um, and uh, you think, I'm not sure if you're ready to, to help me here. I do want to ask you all a question. We've got 300 over participants now, it'd be great. It's a quick survey. Uh, I just have one question. Um, you think, how do we do this? Um, do I, I will click the launch the poll for you. I, I click the next slide first, okay? I tell them, okay, I'm going to ask all of you, I'm going to ask all of you to pick one out of five uh, answers and then we'll look at our collective experience, okay? So the, 
The question is, are you facing a difficult time at work today? You know, like, and uh, if you, it's one, you, it's like, oh, I feel like resigning five times a day. Today is Sunday. I'm not, I hope you're not resigning <laughs> resign on Sunday, but tomorrow, five times a day, I must get a job. I, I just get the job done and I end work at ASAP. I just want to get out of there, you know. Uh, the, the, the number three is a not, not too bad. So you pick number three if you're feeling neutral. You know, not too bad. Some days are good. Some days could be better. Uh, some of you may be feeling pretty good that you do look forward to work most of the time. And uh, number five, if you feel that woohoo, life is amazing, uh, I jump out of bed with joy every day when I go to work. Okay. Can you launch that poll for me, do you think? All right. So you, you have to click this and then we'll see how it goes. Uh, we've got about 200 participating, 220, very good. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now. It's about 270 out of 370. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, I don't count. I don't count very evenly, obviously. All right, you're you want to close. You want to close the poll and you want to show us the results. Sure. Can you show us? Yeah. Yes. Let me just share the results. There we go. Can you all see this? I I'm not sure. Can everyone see this? I think they can. Yes. Yes, we all can. All right. Okay. Can. Okay. So there you are. Right. Uh. Okay. The seven percent, the 20, 20 of you guys out there feel like you're resigning, want to resign. Okay, can I just say, look, I'm glad that you will be able to. Okay, the first important point about this is really understanding, and accessing your feelings. Sometimes I've learned that people and we, all of us as human beings, sometimes are not able to access our emotions and understand how we're actually feeling. Now, it's good that you're able to recognize that you are possibly feeling burnout and you're really having a lot of stress and you know you do think about quitting a lot of times. Uh, 20 of you, thank you for, for answering this question. Uh, it's good that you acknowledge this and that we can do something about it, even if it does mean that you want you have to quit maybe, but let's see what we can do about it, okay? Uh, there's another 18%, uh, it's 20% uh, of this poll, right, actually, which is one in five people just feel that they just go to work, they get the job done and they want to get out of there, you know? Um, I think this falls short of what we expected when we, we signed up for a job. You know, I think we wanted to see ourselves enjoying it a bit more. Uh, the rest really about 44%, uh, almost 44% are neutral. So I think this is a very common experience. Um, uh, good days and bad days and uh, some days could be better. Um, the question for all of us, the 130 in this part is, can you increase that to, can you, bring yourselves to the next level. The next level really is about uh, the 30% of us who feel pretty good that you do look forward to work most of the time. And there are eight lucky people here. Um, I bet Angie's one of them. I don't have anyone. <laughs> Woohoo, life is amazing. You jump out of bed with joy uh, every day. Um, so look, this is, a this is a normal distribution. And I just wanted you to reflect that where you, where, where you voted and where you stand on this now, uh, that's, that means you're, you're not unique. Nobody is standing alone in his sector, in this section. And that there are people in every uh, section that you've chosen, there are people together with you on this. Can you move from one uh, uh, answer to another? Yes, you can. Uh, and in fact, sometimes people slide you know, down from the feeling, feeling, feeling pretty good to the having difficulties. Uh, but many people also are able to increase the sense of satisfaction and joy in the work that they do. Okay, so uh, can we stop sharing this one? Yeah. Okay, so um, that's the first poll. We'll come back again later to ask you a bit more questions about yourselves. Um, all right. Oops. So now let me d uh, dive into a little bit about what is joy in work. Um, and uh, this, you know, I mentioned three aspects just now. Let me share with you um, a bit of the work that's being done by the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. Uh, this is in uh, Massachusetts in the US. 
uh, this talk is a bit based on the work that they do because the, the work that the IHI has done around joy in work in the healthcare setting, uh, I have found very re relevant. I have practiced some of it in um, the workplaces that I've worked in, the National Healthcare Group, as well as uh, in IMH. And now we're doing some of this work in Kutekwat Hospital, and I'll share some of that with you. So going back to this work, uh, is what is actually joy in work, right? Um, and it's really about connection to meaning and purpose. We talked about that just now. It's about creating safe, humane places for people to find meaning and purpose in their work. And really, uh, the context of this work from the Institute of Healthcare Improvement really is about uh, healthcare. So it talks about healthcare being one of the few professions that regularly provides opportunities for its workforce to profoundly improve, improve the lives of others. And so the nature of healthcare should be inherently joyful. Uh, I told you that personally, I found journeying with my patients and helping them to find their strengths in recovery uh, has been very meaningful for me. And I found when they find their happiness and joy, I found it as well. Uh, it's, but can I just say that because, you know, we've got 300 and 400 people in this seminar here. I know everyone is a healthcare work professional. Many people who all the work that we do actually has an impact on others. Whether you're an administrator, you're professional, whether you are, you are building a building with your hands, or whether you're working with your hands or with your brains, you are doing something to contribute to the societies that you live in. Okay, I don't think very few people have work that is completely meaningless. So we do need to find that kind of meaning and, 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 and the sense of what we're doing there. Um, now, this is where I'm going to uh, deep dive a little bit and talk about this concept. Uh, again, this is the IHI Framework for Improving Joy in Work. Uh, it was published in 2017. It's freely available online uh, if you go and look for it. And I'll, I'll describe this wheel for you. Uh, at the center of this is uh, happy, healthy, productive people. Uh, and this is the joyful uh, uh, employee. Um, around it are nine, uh, eight uh, little segments, uh, sorry, nine segments that really describe the components of what would help someone to achieve this sense of happiness uh, and, and, and joy. Uh, I will come back to this again later, but I wanted to just point out to you in this wheel, actually there's some things that the individual can do there are some things that the managers, uh, your managers directly can do, and some things that the organization can do, and you can see. So this is how you to, to see this diagram working, right? So looking at uh, wellness and looking after ourselves, self-care, for example, uh, and, uh, you know, I think if you're attending this course, things like mindful self-compassion uh, would fall into this category. Uh, making uh, daily improvements in your active, in yourself and in your work and measuring your performance. These are things that individuals can do. If you are in charge of a team, really, uh, or you're working in a team, the, what the team can really do is to improve in terms of camaraderie and teamwork and, and build on that and get everyone to be participating in the management. Right? And as if you're a senior leader or senior team leader or even the organization itself, we can also help everyone in the organization to find physical and psychological safety, meaning and purpose, give our colleagues choice and autonomy, and of course, reward and recognize our colleagues. I'll go through one by one. After this, I'm gonna ask you whether or not you uh, have all these nine uh, attributes. And um, I'm thinking that the people, who, the eight people just now who put down that they, they feel that they are joyful every day, Possibly, you know, they may experience these nine different attributes. The first one is um, physical and psychological safety. Now, this is quite a basic, I mean, all of us who, who uh, talk about mass, mass, nose hierarchy, right, will realize that it's a very uh, basic uh, uh, necessity. Um, the environment that we work in must be uh, physically and psychologically safe. You cannot feel physically threatened when you go to your work, meaning that your building or your office is a, is a fire hazard or is dangerous. Uh, or even in fact, in the, in the face of uh, the COVID that we are facing, right? You mustn't feel that you're exposed to infection when you go to work, right? And, uh, and psychological safety refers to the fact that basically you, you feel that you have a, you're respected uh, and you're not being bullied uh, and, you're, and that you, have a, you are able to speak up 
uh, if you have to, and you will be hurt. So this is a concept of physical and psychological safety. Now, as I speak through this, I'd like you to reflect whether or not you have this sense at your workplace that it's an equitable environment that is free from harm, keeps you safe. Uh, there's a culture that is safe and respectful. Um, the second victim concept really is in healthcare, where sometimes um, uh, unpreventable incidents uh, happen to our patients or the people that we're caring for. And uh, I must let you know, and I think the healthcare workers here will recognize this with me, we feel very, very terrible when something, even though we couldn't prevent it, uh, a bad outcome has happened to a patient that we've cared for or we, we've journeyed with and uh, uh, a, a negative outcome. We also feel very much uh, affected by what has happened. That we feel like we are the second uh, um, uh, victim of this. And sometimes, if we have uh, uh, inadvertently uh, uh, um, um, uh, contributed to a negative outcome, uh, the healthcare worker feels very, very distressed about this as well. Um, also, the sense that people need to be free from physical harm. Uh, and we talked about the psychological safety, right? So, are you able to speak up at work if you feel that there's a, a you, even if you had to speak up to say that you made a mistake uh, and uh, to propose ideas to make things better, okay? So that's psychological safety. We'll move on to the next one, which is uh, meaning and purpose, which is very important. Uh, I think um, in my work in uh, trying to help my colleagues find the joy in their work, they do a lot of people have tied this as one of the most important. And we talked about it many times just now, you know, what is the meaning and the purpose of your work? Um, what is that impact, right? Uh, do, do, is the work that you do uh, meaningful to others? Does it make a difference? Uh, if, you, if you didn't do it, would uh, the, the organization miss that work that you're doing? Uh, meaning, I guess, if you, if you quit, right, and they didn't replace you, that means obviously that thing that you were doing maybe didn't mean anything at all. But if they find someone to replace you, uh, that obviously that means that that work is critical. Okay, so you think, you think about that. You know, if, if I leave, uh, will they find someone to replace me to do this work? Because, and I think the answer to most of your questions to you would be yes. Um, you can see how your line of sight to organization, mission, and goals. So this is that, that concept just now about the, the cleaner knowing that his job cleaning the corridors uh, in the space uh, agency was really to send someone to the moon. Uh, and that there's a constancy of purpose evident in the words and actions of the organization. So that, you know, always focus on the same goals Number three is choice and autonomy. Uh, how much choice and autonomy do you have uh, at your workplace? It's not that you are there on your own doing anything that you like, but really that there are some things in your environment that you are able to control. Uh, are you able to um, organize your desk the way you want it to be? You know, uh, uh, I know, I know in some in some places uh, and in healthcare sometimes we we want. Uh, things to be very fixed and organized. I know in, in the healthcare setting, uh, if you're in a ward, for example, we do want uh, the way the equipment is laid out, the medicines are laid out, is a very standard format. It should be the same everywhere and everyone should, you cannot arrange the medicines the way you want it when you come to work and then the nurse, the next nurse comes and arranges the medicines in a different way. That's very dangerous, right? So we all know this. Um, but, you know, when our nurses uh, and my, my colleagues come to work uh, and decide how to organize uh, um, the way uh, um, the forms are filled up, where the equipment is laid out, all the, the resuscitation trolley, all the equipment, it is done collectively. So they felt the sense that they made a contribution to how that's being done. Okay. There are certain areas uh, in your own work, uh, cubicle or space, uh, do you have the autonomy to um, um, you know, organize your, 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 your papers and your, and your, and your books? Uh, and uh, do you have a choice to be able to uh, decide uh, what you want to do for your lunch. Uh, and uh, so these are little choices, you know. I think sometimes we feel we have no choice at all. I think we, you should think about you, that you should have one or two, a few choices that help you to feel that you're not completely uh, 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 without um, 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 autonomy in the workplace, okay. Um, and uh, in the bigger uh, level to this, right, really it's about making choices in your, in your life and your career that, you know, uh, that from time to time, uh, you can review your career with your supervisors and talk about what the next steps are, right? Um, uh, I think you do still need to follow uh, clearly identified rules and guidelines, which I talked about just now. Number four, rewards and recognition. 
I think this is important for all of us. Um, do your, your managers and your leaders uh, understand the work that you're doing? Uh, and do they recognize and do they thank you? And do they, do they, do they reward you or celebrate your outcomes? Uh, I think Angie asked just now, are we grateful for the work that we have? Uh, and if you're grateful for the salary, I guess, yes. I guess that's one way of rewards and recognition. Of course, it is important. Uh, there are other parts as well. Uh, I think this statement says that parties and social gatherings alone are not sufficient. Uh, rewards come in the fact that your, your colleagues um, uh, acknowledge your contributions uh, and that there's a teamwork that is celebrated together. Uh, and it's not the party that you're going to, it's really the, the meaning of the party and the celebration. Uh, recently, we had the opportunity to celebrate Nurses' Day across Singapore. Uh, we had great fun uh, on many Zoom uh, um, parties and celebrations with my colleagues who are nurses. Uh, but really, it's the meaning of it, right? We were really uh, celebrating their courage to care in this difficult environment and difficult time. And so that's what the meaning was. The recognition was for that. Uh, it's not about just uh, uh, entertaining each other. So number four. So I'm asking you, uh, please take a mental note later. I'm going to ask you whether or not you feel that you have um, all these uh, aspects in, in your work. Number five is participative management, uh, the co-production of joy. And this concept really is like what I mentioned just now, when you have an opportunity to make an improvement at the workplace, uh, is everyone asked or given an opportunity to participate? So um, if we're going to start a new service, we're going to start a new um, um, a project. Uh, recently, we had to move some of our services in, in, in my hospital from one location to another. We had to start offering vaccinations to patients. I mean, this is what we know in Singapore, uh, who are in the hospital who have not been vaccinated against COVID. These are new things. And really, the team comes together to work on it, the process. How are we going to ask patients if they say yes? Who are we going to uh, uh, get to, to do the vaccination, etc.? It's that participative management of organizing work together. Uh, uh, rather than one person designing it and say, here, this is the paper and you just follow this. Right? So I think this, this concept that we have some sense of participative management really is something that contributes to joy in work. Um, if you are a leader, I hope, I hope that you practice uh, participative management with your colleagues and your team members, um, that you do engage others before acting, uh, that you inform the colleagues that, you know, how this new work, this new process is going to affect them. Uh, I'll anticipate and then concurrently listen to how people feel and, and listen for, for, for suggestions. People sometimes provide excellent uh, improvement suggestions on making things even better than the way you thought about it. Uh, so I think participating management gives the managers as well as the, uh, the team members uh, a sense of uh, joy, I guess, in the fact that you came to work and you contributed to this new uh, process that, or new project or new service that your organization is doing. Number six is uh, camaraderie and teamwork. Uh, again, this is, um, we all work in, most of us work in teams. I, I think maybe some of you work individually, but almost everyone works in, in teams. And really it's understanding the fact that, you know, we can't work alone. I, I'm so grateful for my team of senior leaders at Kutek Park Hospital. I cannot run this hospital without working with them uh, and their contributions. And so we do need to make sure that we constantly try to build on that social cohesion to make us understand each other, to listen uh, and uh, to trust the work that we are doing uh, and uh, to mutually support uh, and be companions to each other. Uh, I think just now, um, Angie asked in the gratitude uh, exercise that we did just now, do I have a friend at work? Uh, immediately, I thought of so many. Uh, and um, that made me feel immediately grateful, but also uh, you see how it's linked to that joy. And I thought that's why I feel joy. Number seven, eight, and nine have to do with uh, a lot of individuals. So if you see this slide here, remember on the chart here, you can see in this segment, right? Uh, these three parts here are really up to every one of us. We can do all these things on our own, really. One is, can we make daily improvements? Do we feel helpless that we just have to do work that we can't improve? Um, I think, 
you know, learning how to make little improvements uh, and, and uh, even in, in, a, in a daily work, uh, uh, learning how to do it makes you feel very um, empowered. Uh, and so if you feel that, you know, uh, I'm stuck doing this process and uh, I, I take so many steps to, to access uh, my emails or to, to open certain documents, uh, and I don't know how to make it any faster. Uh, learning how to, to, to better use your software, uh, learning better how to uh, um, navigate some of the day-to-day -day hassles uh, really um, uh, will help you to feel more empowered and find that joy. Now, uh, in the healthcare setting, we try and get many of our colleagues to be able to do uh, continuous improvement. Uh, here in... Uh, KTPH, we call it our Kaizen journey, okay? And uh, it has to do with uh, continuous improvement. Uh, it's a philosophy and it's a way that when we come to work, we always see there's an opportunity to improve. There are ways of doing it. See the problem, dissect the problem, uh, you know, uh, uh, and then find a method to try and make small improvements and measure the outcomes. So this is a concept of daily improvement. I hope you get that chance to do it. If you don't know how to make improvements, ask your, ask your colleagues, how did you solve your problem? I, I think NGRs talked about problem solving as well. Problem solving is a daily improvement. Eight is wellness and resilience. And really this is what this conference is about. Very important that we do need to look after our health and wellness and self-care is not something to be um, um, uh, forgotten. Um, resilience and stress management uh, is a uh, important responsibility for uh, the organization, the managers and the leaders and your team leaders, but it is also our responsibility. Uh, I have responsibility to look after myself uh, when I come to work and to make sure that my physical and mental health are taken care of by me as well, right? And so just now, you know, a little exercise before we started this session uh, on a bit of a, a gratitude uh, exercise as well as uh, a bit of the muscle relaxation uh, and to focus our, 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 our being uh, in the present uh, was very helpful, okay? Um, Work-life balance, uh, we could have a whole section on this, but really, I think we try. And I think the, um, uh, we could have a whole lecture on work-life balance. Reality, of course, is that um, working from home sometimes can disrupt this, but there's still many ways that we can be able to separate and end work and end the Zoom meetings at a certain time and, and go back to spending time with your family and your loved ones. Uh, and mental health support is very important. Uh, I think all of our organizations recognize the importance of mental health for all our employees and colleagues. And we've stepped up in terms of trying to address and help certain individuals who may be experiencing difficulty. Last time, the last item really is about real-time measurement. Uh, and um, what does real-time measurement mean? It means feedback in a way. Uh, do you get feedback from your colleagues, from your customers, from your boss uh, and, your, and your managers? Um, feedback is not, um, I'm not sure how you perceive it. It's not a bad thing, isn't it? Because if you, if you get feedback from your customers and they tell you that you know, they love certain things, then you do more of that. If you get feedback from your customers that tell you that this is of all the things that you're doing, this one really is, makes, it, um, make me, makes me a very unhappy customer. Um, you should not do that or you should try and do a different way or, or you should explain the situation. So real-time measurement uh, on the work that we do and uh, similarly, right, if you're working in a team, and you find that you're doing something that your team members uh, find that um, they love it because you're always helping them to do this thing. Uh, you should do more and everyone can do some of that. And similarly, if you are doing something at the workplace that you know, may uh, be um, uh, causing um, disruption to other people, you would want to know this as well. Real-time measurement is a concept about finding out how you are doing. Uh, uh, the impact that you have on others uh, and the impact you have on your organization. It can be um, feedback at a huge level. Once in a while, I think organizations do some kind of a survey and things like that. Uh, but it can almost be daily as well. You know, um, how did I do? Was it a good day? Checking yourself, uh, you know, was it a good day for me? Um, this concept of joint work, um, one of the things that we were trying to do really is to get uh, all of us 
to think about whether we had a good or a not so good day at the end of the day. That's real-time measurement. Um, as you step away from the office or at the, as you end the work day, you ask yourself, was it a good day? Uh, and if it was, just reflect on what it was that made it good. Maybe it was the fact that you finished a project. Maybe it was the fact that someone gave you a compliment. Maybe it was because you went to a meeting and you felt that you really, really contributed something that was uh, accepted. Uh, or even the fact that you maybe con made a contribution that someone said, okay, because of what you said, we will do something differently. That's very impactful, right? So these things are the things that you say that made it a good day. And you will want to try to do a bit more of that the next day, if you can, because you reflected and you realized what was it that made it a good day for you. It may not be a good day. So for you, may you have said, oh, this today I felt really drained. Uh, I feel uh, exhausted. I just want to go home. Uh, and why? Well, it was because basically you did something, uh, you spent the whole day trying to sort out a problem and you found that really um, at the end of the day, um, you, couldn't, you couldn't solve the problem. Or you went to a meeting and you provided some inputs and you felt that they didn't understand what it was. Okay. Now, how do you deal with um, thoughts like this when you have a reflection? Uh, one can just say, you know, I, you know, this is very frustrating. Or could you say, perhaps, I couldn't solve the problem, maybe someone else can. So tomorrow, I'm not going to do it this way again. It's, I'm going to try and find out how someone else could solve the problem because I don't want to do repeat what happened today, tomorrow, right? And again, for example, if you found that you made a contribution, but they didn't, they didn't accept it, and you felt that they didn't understand what you meant. Well, you come back and you think about how am I going to communicate in a different way tomorrow so that this concern that I have will be uh, understood and accepted or at least acknowledged and understood by my leaders. So real-time measurement, I thought, you know, it's a single line here, regular assessments on performance to feedback into daily ongoing improvement. So this is this concept that you can, if you reflect on yourself on a daily basis, then you can actually make a daily improvement. Okay. A lot of theory there. I don't know if it's been too heavy going. I'm going to ask you at this point in time to tell me, okay, so I mentioned the nine. Okay, I'll go back one more step. Uh, there are nine things here. Psychological and, phys psychological and, and physical safety, meaning and purpose, choice and autonomy, recognition and rewards, participative management, camaraderie and teamwork, daily improvement, wellness and resilience, and real-time measurement. These, if these are the elements that contribute to joy in work, um, tell me, <laughs> how much joy do you experience in your work? Now, please, uh, I'm not asking about joy at work. This is joy in your work. Think about the work you are doing. Uh, you may be a healthcare worker. That means, you know, in, in the healthcare work that you do, Okay, uh, in the, in the, if you are working as an administrator, right, in the, that, that work that you're doing, whether you're supporting finance or HR or you're doing uh, accounts or, or uh, you know, is that work uh, bringing you joy? If you're if you on the front line uh, working with, with customers directly, servicing them in some way or other, is that giving you that joy in the work that you do? Okay. So um, time for, for you to tell me, uh, and we'll uh, look at the answer again. Uh, Yuping, can we, can we launch the poll again? So sure. do you experience joy in your work? Okay, here we go. Okay, now we've got 470 people in the room. That's fantastic. Three hundred and fifteen, three hundred and twenty have have responded. Seventy percent. We'll go up to about eighty-five percent, and then we will stop the poll. We're at seventy-five percent now. Oh, it's kind of stopped. Okay, if we can reach eighty, a few more of you, can you give us your reply? Okay, three, two, one. Okay, can you share? Great, can you all see this? Wow, 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 I'm quite amazed. Uh, and uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm um, 
quite excited to see this. Um, also, I'm wondering whether I need to do this talk anymore because <laughs> look at this. If you add these three, uh, 40, 48, and 6%, that's 88, that's 94% of us are able to find that joy in the work we do. 6% of us, that's 20. Uh, that's more than the first round just now when we asked, find the joy in the work all the time. I'm so happy for you. Uh, and um, I'm going to ask, okay, sorry, you, are you, I'm going to, at the end of this talk, you're going to share, all of you are going to share, how did you do that? Uh, because all of us are finding. Now, a lot, the vast majority, these two groups here are 88% of us, uh, that's the vast, vast majority. Actually, almost 50% frequently find the joy in the work we do, and 40% at least sometimes. Now, um, now, so I think there's one, two people here who don't find any joy in the work they do. I hope that you will, again, I, the idea behind it is to know how you feel. Listen to this talk, uh, and um, see if at the end of it, I'm going to show, I'm going to suggest some ways that we all can do something about improving and increasing that joy. Okay. Uh, and uh, 20 people rarely experience the joy. Think about this work that you have chosen to do. Um, and some people will say, I have no choice. I had to do this job. I have this, no other choice. I need the money. But think about it. You know? um, even if you have join the profession or a job because you really, really needed the money. When you started working on it, did you try to understand the meaning of what it is? Um, you know, um, if you are, I, I, I always take the healthcare concept because really um, I, I, I work in the healthcare organization for many years and, we are, and, we're, and we're dealing with, with COVID in Singapore. Outside uh, my hospital, uh, we will see people who do uh, visitor management. Uh, these people, we never had visitor management uh, in such large numbers in, in, in the hospital in Singapore before. But of course, now we have to ma make sure that visitors are screened appropriately and they don't spend too much time in, in, in the hospitals. Uh, and um, visitors who are unhealthy, are not feeling well, are, are not advised not to come into the hospital because they can bring illness. So now I'm talking about the people who do visitor management. They may find that their job is very mundane uh, and you know they only do it because perhaps when we recruited visitor management, uh, some people you know, said they, they couldn't find a better job. They didn't like to do this, but they're there. Uh, and I, I agree it is a tough job because they are out in the front uh, of the hospital uh, and many people come and it is tough sometimes when you have to turn someone away when they don't look so physically well, you don't really want to compromise their safety and the safety of uh, the patients in the ward if they're coming in with a cough uh, and a cold or fever. And, and they say their advice or they turned away and, and people get very upset. Everyone's upset. Um, now, think about that person who's doing visitor management. Um, he or she may have come and joined us because they really, really needed to, the, 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 the work that they were doing before COVID was not sustainable anymore. They have to come to help us. But, you know, think about it because they're actually helping to keep the hospital safe, keep the patients and the staff safe by making sure that people who are not feeling well, uh, who might be infectious, are not coming in to compromise the rest of us who need to do this very critical healthcare work. Now, I'm just telling you a story because uh, I, I, I did speak to some of the visitor management staff and, and it's, we can find that joy. I hope we can, all of us. Okay, so the, 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 in this chart, the 22 people who, who rarely find that joy. Um, it's okay, thank you for acknowledging this. See if you can find that meaning and try and, and remove some of the, the barriers that prevent you from experiencing the joy in your work that you do. We'll talk a little about how next. Thanks for sharing uh, the slides, Yuping. Let's move on. Okay. So um, why is joy in work important? Um, for us really, um, and healthcare really, the stressful healthcare environment, the challenges COVID has, paid, has done, has brought to us, um, we are definitely at risk. So I think that many healthcare workers in this, in this audience, uh, we need to recognize that this is something that we are facing. Uh, and first step, of course, is to assess yourselves. Um, and uh, as a result, if we don't recognize that we are under stress and we are not, and we're losing that joy in the work that we do, 
uh, and we don't even recognize that it's going on, uh, obviously um, the impact could be quite significant. Uh, poor interactions with patients, reduced quality of care, uh, friction between staff uh, and, and, and colleagues, people you used to, to work with uh, and get along with, you find that you get irritated with them now. So many, many um, consequences if we don't pay attention to this joy. So it's not just, you know, when we said just now who's having, who's, who's feeling terrible and wants to quit, it's not just about as long as you don't want to quit, that's fine. It's really about the connection to meaning and purpose, right? And, uh, you know, there is a paper that was written by, an uh, uh, article written by uh, Dr. Deming, who is someone who is really a champion of, uh, of improvement uh, at the workplace, talked about joy in work being a fundamental right. That we come to work really, um, we contribute to the organization and in return, we should feel that joy uh, in the work that we do. Uh, it's up to leaders to ensure that uh, and workers can enjoy that, right? I agree. Uh, I feel that I, I take responsibility to ensure to that and as much as is possible, right? We, everybody in the organization that I work in is given the opportunity to find and enhance that joy in his or her work. But as I also showed you just now, every one of us as a worker, as an employee, as someone coming in, has also the responsibility to find his own joy and contribute. Can we improve and increase? Well, I, the reason why I'm doing this talk really is to help you to understand the elements of joy, but not just to, you know, at the end of the day, say, oh, well, it's joy, it's joy. If I have it, I have it. If I don't, I don't. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm talking to you is because I believe we can, we can improve and increase it a little bit. So everybody can move up one step just now in that poll that we did just now. Uh, it would be fantastic for all of us. Uh, this is the work that we did at the National Healthcare Group in the last couple of years. It got a bit disrupted because of, of, uh, of uh, COVID. Um, but we, um, based on the IHI uh, uh, paper as well and, uh, the uh, and the advice, we feel that there are four elements uh, to helping uh, teams, organizations, as well as individuals, um, improve or increase the joy in the work that they're doing. Okay, uh, and you can see on this is really, uh, I'm sharing with you some of the things that we did and there's four steps that we did here. The first one really is, uh, we called it the let's check. Uh, we organized ourselves uh, and I did a series of little pilots uh, at the National Healthcare Group from the different organizations. I'm not sure if they've got some of my uh, uh, um, members from NHG who participated in these pilots but in this audience. Uh, but really, the idea really is to first step is to listen to each other and find out where we are, okay? And uh, we had, uh, some had more than one session or some had one session where we sat together in teams to just ask ourselves what is what matters to us when we come to work. And you, you'll be surprised at our colleagues. Uh, you know, I told you what matters to me when, I, when I'm able to uh, help my patients to improve their mental health, that matters much to me, okay? When I'm able to help my colleagues in my administrative role uh, to solve a problem, or I've been able to put teams together that were able to work effectively, uh, that's meaningful to me. Uh, and um, so everybody has a different meaning uh, and what matters to them. Uh, some people say that, you know, if uh, what's meaningful to me and what matters to me is really when I send an email, I get a response. Uh, I send a, a message, uh, people recognize and acknowledge that I've, that I've done that, you know, rather than it's, I'm sending off emails to, 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 to people who never respond. Um, so different people find different things meaningful uh, and what matters. And we need to listen to everyone, uh, understand what it is, because everybody has a right to improve and increase in that area. Let's check with the first one. We did measure. This is uh, on, the, on the right here. You see our little measurement tool. Uh, we actually got... Um, this little poll, it's actually these are the, you know, there's not, I showed you the nine things, these are the nine things actually, but we made it into 10 because we split it, uh, physical and psychological safety uh, for our, um, our, our little project. And we got everyone to measure and they'll measure this, right? And the idea really is that you can, you can actually measure um, your team or yourself. And like I, I, I demonstrated just now in this talk, right? When you actually try to measure, uh, then you, it's a first start because then you are able to see where you stand. Uh, in the area of, um, of, of how you're doing, okay? Uh, 
Then I think the next area is the finding gaps. You know, finding gaps really is to figure out if you, what matters to you uh, is not happening. So um, let's go back to the example of someone sending emails uh, and they find that uh, nobody responds. <laughs> so, uh, and that matters to him or her. First of all, to understand um, how do you um, address that issue, right? Uh, should you tell people that I expect there is a reply? Some of us people put this, you know, uh, you need to, uh, uh, acknowledgement in terms of reply. Uh, some people would say then, uh, I would like to, uh, at the end of the email, say, please uh, respond to this email or uh, let me know that you read it. Um, perhaps you should not do this for all your emails, but actually the ones that you feel that you need a response. Okay. And so this matters. So you can do some, you can find the gaps and you can, you can make it. The next step really is to figure out what are the things that you're doing uh, or you're not doing that causes this sense that you're not having the, 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 the meaningfulness uh, that, of the work that you're doing, right? And so finding that gap is very important. That's the next step. Again, right, uh, the projects that we did in the pilot projects that we did in NHG got people to do this in teams. Uh, I'll show you some pictures later of uh, us doing it together. And finding gaps is very important because you realize that there are many opportunities to make improvements in your teamwork, in the way you work, right? Um, and um, the next thing, of course, is that if you know what the gaps are, you can use uh, an improvement method to make an improvement. Um, I mentioned just now, uh, my colleagues in uh, KTPH are, are very good at um, this Kaizen uh, uh, approach to uh, continuous improvement. Uh, and we use uh, these problem solving tools and tips to try to make improvements see the problem first and then start making improvement. And then the last step really is to track, have we made improvement in that particular area? So let's say this team finds that whenever they send out uh, their, their work, nobody responds and no one tells them what it is. So they found that this is the gap that's causing them to find, lose a bit of joy in the work. They, they love their work, but whenever they do something, a project, when they send it out, the bosses and the people don't seem to recognize it or take a long time to respond. So in fact, what they do, they would do, for example, is to put in um, a follow-up uh, email or they call or they put in the email that we would like appreciate some response within the next three days. And that was the improvement. So they, add, they added on a little bit more after the, the, they, they sent out uh, the, the reports. Uh, and um, they found that people responded because they made a polite request. Right? And they explain why. So they put down in the, in the email that we would like a response because it would help us to decide whether or not we should proceed with this project in this way or we should make alterations. So suddenly people got this email to realize that, oh, they wanted to know this, not just because they want to know that, you know, to recognize that they've been working hard. We know they're working very hard, but they wanted to know whether this, uh, this update is useful or not because then if it is not useful, they want to make an improvement. So once people realized that that was what was happening, people responded to them. I'm just giving you an example. Huh? And so then they, they, they did this improvement uh, where they, they improved their communication with their stakeholders uh, and then they tracked. Then they measured themselves and they did this again. Uh, and they found that when they, when they measured themselves in terms of finding the joy in their work that they were doing, it improved a little bit. They felt that when they came to work, their, their meaning and purpose, you see this one, when they, when they measured this, they all felt that, oh, yes, I really realized that actually what I'm doing is meaningful to the rest of the organization. They also realized that, you know, when they actually uh, exercise the autonomy to make a request to their stakeholders to respond, they were uh, exercising their choice and autonomy. And when their stakeholders responded, they felt that, ah, people acknowledged that what we were doing. So, and then they did this, this was part of the daily improvement work that they did. So, you know what I'm saying? This is a simple example. Um, Join work projects can be much more complicated around um, HR matters, around administrative processes, et cetera. But these are, I'm saying that we can all work it, at improving the joy in many ways, small and big, okay? So I hope that this example I gave you uh, illustrated one way of doing something, uh, of doing this. So uh, the let's chat part really is the, you know, promoting psychological safety, uh, asking people what matters to you, as I mentioned just now. So that was what we did. Uh, 
So when people said that, you know, it is this thing that, you know, what matters to me is people acknowledging the work we do and people don't acknowledge it. It's like a really pebble in the shoe. I'm trying to carry on my work, but I don't know whether people appreciate it or not, you know. Uh, and uh, so that became, a, you know, a nagging issue for, for the team, right? So, you know, they, they decided that, that let's, let's work on this. We need to get some feedback from people who we send our reports to, right? Uh, and uh, decided, they decided as a team that this is what really matters to them and they wanted to work on it. Uh, and uh, my healthcare colleagues will recognize this. We use this a lot uh, in healthcare, the fishbone diagram. Why are we not feeling that people recognize or acknowledge the work we're doing? Well, because basically people, maybe people thought really is no need to reply because they already know. Maybe it's they send off their reports at a time when people have no time to respond. Maybe they keep saying, or maybe they send off their report at 11 o'clock at night, right? I don't know. So maybe that's the time when, how do you expect someone to respond to your, 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 your reports when you send it out at 11 o'clock at night? You know, maybe the process, maybe the report was way too long and people couldn't understand the report. So they couldn't, I mean, re reply back quickly. So they, they tried to, to, and then maybe they didn't request for, for a report that, uh, a response to their report. And they didn't explain to the stakeholders why they wanted. So that's an example. So they did an improvement project. They sent out the reports earlier. They made sure that the people that they were reporting to uh, uh, were able to understand that they needed some feedback to be able to progress. Uh, the, they also made the report easier to read. Uh, so these are the things that they did, right? And this is the improvement projects. Uh, and as I said, they, they measured. Uh, so they got more responses. And then when they tracked their own sense of uh, uh, joy, they found uh, using the same little uh, tool, measurement tool, they found that basically this actually helped them to find a bit more joy in, in that project that they were doing. So this is the, uh, these are, okay, these are, so um, we did this as facilitated workshops. I think there's many ways of, 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 of getting teams to come back and, uh, and uh, to find the joy in work that we do. But this is how um, we did this uh, in NHG. This is, sorry, uh, this is pre-COVID time. So you can see <laughs> standing close to each other. And, uh, um, but we made it, um, so these are different teams, as you can see, where, you know, uh, reporting on the different projects that they were doing. Uh, oh, that happens to be me trying to facilitate. Uh, trying to make uh, the situation more visible, recognizing how people feel about the work that they do, finding out what the, the impediments were, the pebbles in the, in, in the shoes that were causing. They love their work, but it's just a bit of a hassle every time, right? And then making improvements, right? Uh, and getting everyone to participate, that, that participative management. So the whole process of focusing and finding and improving that joy in the work that we do can be very fun and can be very rewarding. Indeed, this is what the feedback was at the end of it. So um, we call it JIW uh, in NHG. Uh, and uh, that part about let's chat, right? People said, wow, I didn't get the chance to say about these things about what matters to me. And uh, the colleague said, I didn't know these, I didn't know these are the things that mattered to my, my, my friends and my, and my teammates. So unspoken conversations. Uh, it was great. People had fun. Uh, and um, some of them, because some of the projects really, um, we wanted to have uh, more inputs from management. Uh, the hospitals and the teams, the departments that participated managed to get the managers to also invest in some of the improvement projects. Uh, so, uh, we tried to use different different tools. And of course, you know, nothing is, and this is fantastic because we got feedback. Some people said that we made a, a toolkit. We, I, I don't know, you see the picture here. The picture has got this little box. This is the toolkit that we developed. Uh, the, the, these two types of boxes that we got people to use the toolkit to, to develop, to, to guide them along this process of finding joy. Uh, some people felt that the toolkit could be improved. Um, some people felt that, oh my God, I'm going to another project. <laughs> and uh, with that mindset, right, I think they felt that they were very stressed about the whole thing and we have to recognize it. So I think we should not force people to find joy in the work that they do, but if they want to find joy, we should help them. Uh, and we should encourage people to find that joy. Uh, not all the toolkits, all the tools in the toolkit were useful. Uh, and at the end of our projects last year, we started entering into the COVID era. And so people felt very sad. 
how are we going to find joy? Actually, I must say that even in the midst of, 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 of battling COVID as a country, uh, there are many opportunities for us to find meaning and joy in this work. Uh, I'd like to end really by, by talking about some of the work that I, we do here at Yishun Health. Yishun Health is the uh, family of uh, uh, Kutepot Hospital, uh, Yishun Community Hospital, and uh, Admiralty Medical Center. These are the facilities that we run up north here in Singapore. Uh, and um, just a couple of uh, pictures here, really, you know, uh, we have always uh, felt it, the well being of our colleagues, uh, everyone who works here is important. We've, we've had these five pillars uh, of health that we've uh, used as a framework. Uh, and uh, you can see that, you know, the very basic things we have to look after our physical as well as mental health, uh, well-being, right? From uh, exercising and eating well, these are the two basic uh, um, uh, uh, aspects of physical wellness, really. Uh, and as healthcare workers, we must always make sure that there's good hygiene because this is a very important source. Uh, stop unhealthy habits. Uh, like smoking and other things. Uh, and we have always had this yellow sunshine dog, which says be happy. Um, as I mentioned, right, happiness is sometimes sometimes trivialized because you say, you know, you can be happy one moment and sad the next. It's true. That's just a fleeting uh, emotion. What we really, really mean is to find joy, uh, a sense of uh, purpose and meaning and, and deep satisfaction in, in the work that we do. Um, uh, this is us obviously trying to do a lot of celebration, recognition and rewards, uh, having lots of fun, teamwork and camaraderie. Uh, and uh, and uh, this has, uh, again, pre-COVID times. Like what I said, you know, did COVID stop us from doing this? Uh, and did it suck out all the joy from our work? Um, I'd like to think that we didn't allow COVID to uh, overwhelm us in this way. Yes, we had to step up to do many things that we didn't anticipate as a, as a healthcare organization, as a hospital. Uh, and um, so many new challenges were thrown to us. But we continued, you know, we continued to um, 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 celebrate and recognize. This is, we, I talked about this just now. This is our Nurses' Day celebration. <laughs> uh, sharing and recognizing and appreciating everyone's work, especially in the nurses, they contact our nurses who made major contributions, courageous uh, individuals who had the courage to care during a difficult and stressful time. These are two of our nurses actually, uh, who helped everyone to learn how to de-stress uh, and uh, to make little decorative uh, uh, um, um, bottles, even during the time when uh, uh, we were busy uh, with COVID. Take time off to self-care, right? Uh, and uh, this is the, our Eating Wisely. So we continue our series. We used to have these cooking demos for our staff uh, and colleagues, right? Uh, and everyone used to come participate together and learn to eat healthy. Uh, we went online, just like every one of you, we went online. So really, I think the concept really of staff well-being, we made sure that we continue to do this. <laughs> Angie, I don't know if you're still watching. <laughs> this is, I'm sure there are many, many screenshots of you doing this because this is what mindfulness is about. Me too. Me too. I'm here as well. Uh, we've had many sessions uh, of uh, self-care uh, in uh, Asian Health. And uh, recently we were privileged to have uh, Angie from Brahm Center to come and lead us uh, to remind us to recharge ourselves through the practice of mindfulness. Uh, and uh, we had... Uh, a small group of participants over lunch, but uh, here we are, uh, not forgetting that you know part of finding the joy in our work is self care and resilience, and we are practicing what we preach in this instance here. So we're all learning to do uh, some uh, uh, mindfulness practice. So I end uh, by concluding that really uh, these are indeed challenging times. Uh, we do need to commit to finding the joy in our work. Uh, we have to admit that um, we, the changing world of COVID uh, and so much disruption in our personal lives uh, you know, um, has threatened the joy that we used to feel or used to sense when we came to work. And so we must first of all recognize that 
we need to measure it. So, you know, but I must say, you know, this audience is amazing because I just look at the polls just now and a lot of us are still finding the joy in the work that we do. It's great, yeah. Uh, if we want to improve it, it's not complicated. I just said, uh, you know, we can, first of all, let's talk about it. Let's identify things that we are gaps that are preventing us from feeling maximum joy. Let's do a little improvement project that can actually help to remove that impediment if we can, right? Uh, and um, let's work on this together. Uh, and uh, I hope that wherever you work, uh, your, you, your, your, your teammates, uh, your managers, and your bosses uh, will support this because it is important. Uh, and uh, collectively, an organization can support all its colleagues and employees to find the joy in their work. I'm going to turn the floor to you. Uh, I think there's some Q&A, but actually, you know, um, I wanted to hear from you because, you know, based on the polls that we did just now, um, many of us in this room uh, are able to find that joy in the work, despite the challenges that we face and despite difficulties that we had to go through these last 18 months. Uh, some said you found joy all the time, some said most of the time, and some of you said yeah, quite often. Uh, and uh, I'd love to know what have you been doing to increase the joy in your work? Uh, we, um, I'm going to open, um, Yuping, can you tell us how you want us to do this? Is it in the Q&A section or in the chat section? Sure, uh, Prof. Trasso, I've opened the chat so people can type uh, their responses in the chat box and then everyone can see. Uh, so just a reminder for everyone to address your message to everyone so that everyone can see and not just the hosts and panelists. Okay, we've opened the chat section. It, I would love it if, you know, now I would like everybody to talk to each other at this point in time. We'll do some Q&As later, but it would be great if you can all talk to each other and talk to me. The question being just now, what have you been doing or what can you do now that we all know a little bit more about this concept of joy in work? What are you going to do or what have you been doing to increase that joy in the work that you do? Okay, and Angie is here. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> I showed a picture of us just now doing mindfulness. I know. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure you see many pictures of us doing that, right? <laughs> With the eyes closed and the neck swiveling. <laughs> Thank you. That was such a wonderful talk for a Sunday morning. And uh, despite what you think, uh, we had uh, over 480 people concurrent at any time yeah uh, I'm amazed. yeah and there were probably many more who came in and then left and the other people joined so that's how it is <laughs> okay now i'm turning the floor to our fantastic audience okay because they are and you please can you all turn on the chat and see because the amazing ideas are coming in honestly i would i'm going to copy all of them because these are great ideas a lot of it has to do with self-care uh, and uh, being grateful that we have practiced just not well being grateful still have a job but grateful that your job is meaningful and helping others um, Kendra says that remaining in the present moment engaging and connecting with people sharing my passion with others in work that's fantastic you know um, focus on self-care uh, appreciating what others are doing uh, uh, someone says she's a doctor and uh, she is, appreciates what she's doing because it serves others and makes them happy I think doctors and healthcare workers are very blessed because we get this rare opportunity to help others. Um, keep going back to my purpose uh, and ask me what I can benefit the people in the organization. That's a wonderful way to think about how to increase that joy. Um, clarify expectations. Yes, that's one way, of course. I, as I mentioned in the example just now, right? You know, if you suddenly find that you don't find that joy because you're not sure, you've got no feedback, no one's telling you whether you're making a difference or not, ask. Tell me, am I doing okay? Then you have that sense that you know, you're, you're, you're back on course. Uh, Self-care, uh, hiking, doing house chores, oh, fantastic. <laughs> I think your family members will love that. <laughs> uh, uh, this is, a, you know, I talked about Kaizen just now in, in KTPH, right? That's a very um, Japanese concept about uh, continuous improvement. Someone had mentioned, Sharifa mentioned Ikigai, which is really the purpose of what you do in life. Uh, and really, uh, she chooses to impact the lives of kids with special needs and their families. So you too, yeah, I agree. You know, you're blessed to share the space with um, um, uh, um, 
with people who, who, uh, who are buddies who enjoy being uh, in this work as well. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, Lauren suggested celebrating small successes. We don't, we, we unfortunately, uh, I think we don't compliment or thank each other enough. Um, and, and G, are you seeing some of it? You want to call out some of these things? These are great um, uh, ideas, you know, I'm just reading them and you are really way faster than me now. <laughs> I'm scrolling down the chat and there are 71 new messages. <laughs> I'm just going to read them out. Uh, I hope you, you follow me as well. Um, Checking in with colleagues uh, when you return to colleagues. Okay, that's an important part. I thought that is, is part of teamwork and camaraderie and it's about uh, 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 self-care. So always making that connection, uh, asking people how they are and, uh, and offering to help, uh, not only gives you opportunity to help your colleagues, but actually able helps you to find that meaning that you are doing something at the workplace uh, that's meaningful as well. Um, start an interest group. Um, Many people have said uh, compassion, uh, mindful compassion, practice mindfulness. Um, revisit the connection to the organization's purpose. I think that's very important. You're right. So sometimes we don't know what we, we seem to be, you know, new things being done. And sometimes without clear explanation, and I must say sometimes um, I'm guilty as, as a manager, sometimes I'm not explaining why why we are doing this. We just say, oh, we do have to do this now, you know, without explaining why. Uh, and people say, I don't know what we're doing this for. It seems meaningless, but the context. So ask, ask it, I'm sorry, boss. I don't know why we're doing this. I thought we were doing fine. Why do we have to do this new uh, piece of work, right? Um, Joyce says, getting my voice heard by sharing ideas with leaders proactively and approach them to follow up if they don't reply. That's being very, very empowered and well done. I think we should do that. Uh, as I mentioned just now, um, Ask for feedback. Uh, say it helps me, uh, and uh, I want to help you. And that's what it's. it's. And if you have this dynamic uh, uh, um, uh, um, relationship with your colleagues and your your boss, I think that brings about a lot of joy and satisfaction. Um, someone says, uh, uh, Sim Eiling says, send words of appreciation and kindness to colleagues. Uh, yes, and you can even do it online and WhatsApp messages. Uh, respecting is very important. Um, Jennifer I just says, call out Todos uh, saying that I find setting boundaries and saying no helpful is helpful to manage anxiety and burnout because a lot of people say yes too much and not yeah. able to cope. Yeah, that's that's really good. That yeah. empowerment. Yeah, I think you're way up the front, Angie. Read out a few more because I'm reading from the back. Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm, one, I'm, 100 messages, I'm 100 messages behind. You guys are great. Uh, I I hope we can. Are we going to keep some of this? Yeah, we can actually save the chats. Yeah, and send yeah, yeah. I love. I, well. I think we should use this, you know, and we could we could share it because I do. I think this is great because um, everyone's giving excellent advice to each other. Um, I I I'm so grateful that you are you are sharing. Um, yeah, read out some, Angie. You read out some. Uh, affirming each other, I think that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes we want to be affirmed, but we don't affirm others, so we also don't get any uh, affirmation affirmation back. So. Yeah. Journaling to clarify your thoughts. Um, a lot of people say uh, responding and 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 uh, and feedback to each other. I think it's very important. Someone says smile and greet each other. From staff cleaners, staff and cleaners to leaders. Yes, you know it's it doesn't cost us anything to say hello, good morning, how are you? Right. It makes yeah. each other's day. Yeah. And also Mindful to understand is. different people's beliefs and values. I think that's really good you know, not to expect other people to be like, like us or think like us. Yes, that is very important. And in fact, the diversity and the, 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 the different skills and the different types of people we bring to work, that's what makes us strong as an organization. Uh, my friend, Michaela Irene, focus on the meaning of my work. Can I, I, Michaela, can I just mention that you are, you are a, a, a very fantastic uh, 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 nurse uh, and uh, I know your work and how dedicated you are to your patients. Uh, and yeah, and and yes, and and that that is very meaningful. Yeah. Be a bit positive. Yeah, we should try and be a bit positive. Um, so simple breathing exercise. I think I wanted to bring back some you know things about that we learn in mindfulness. Really, it's about um, about um, being aware without judgment. 
And that's one of the concepts behind uh, trying to find the joy. And the first step really is just chatting and, and being aware of the level of joy you feel or you don't feel without judgment. It just is. And then you have to, again, without uh, judgment, figure out how we can remove the things that are causing barriers to the joy. If you start having a lot of the sense that, you know, I, I, I cannot find the joy in my work because my, 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 my my boss is not nice, my colleagues are, are you know, and this work is, is unnecessary. You have a lot of uh, preconceived judgmental thoughts, then you trap yourself uh, in, this, in this, right, Angie? So, you know, applying that concept of just observing what it is, it is, there are certain days that I don't feel the joy. And, uh, and that's, and why? is because these are the certain things that are happening without judging. And then we can one by one try to remove them. And I will go one step beyond that to say that we may not find joy in certain moments. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Unpack the whole day, you know, like, oh, we had some uh, difficult moments or unpleasant moments, but that doesn't become our entire day because our entire day has so many moments. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm trying to read this, but I hope you all are reading this chat because it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's one question that I thought uh, it's very useful to respond to, uh, Prof Chua, that is, how do you deal with nasty people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have nasty patients or nasty someone who comes to you. <laughs> Although your staff may all be probably quite nice to you. <laughs> um, okay, so I, 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 I think about this way. I'd rather not label. Uh, I, I've never tried to label people as, as good or bad or nasty or, or, or nice. Uh, I try to understand uh, what makes them um, communicate or, or respond in a certain way. Uh, it is difficult. Um, going back to my, um, my colleagues who do visitor management or some of my nursing colleagues who encounter, um, um, I'm sad, I think you've read about this, right? In, in the healthcare settings, sometimes my colleagues get, um, get um, abused, you know, by, by patients and family members. Uh, and it's very tough on them, uh, and they, they, they are told that they, they didn't um, do something or they, were, they didn't pay attention or something. Uh, and um, it's trying to understand why the person said the way what he or she said, you know, how come those remarks came about as being so, so hurtful and nasty. Most of the time, uh, people who appear to be nasty are in a bad or in a difficult position or place themselves. First of all, let's help them to understand. We are understanding where they come from. Uh, in their, in the, and I use the word again, in their nastiness, uh, there may be things that are still relevant that we can do and help them uh, and reach out to them. Um, we try not to respond to their nastiness, uh, but we also uh, don't allow them to continue to treat us in a way that is disrespectful. So there's three things to try and understand where they come from recognizing that they are probably in a, in a difficult space themselves. Try to find out if within the, the, the whole framework of nastiness, there is some part that we can help them in certain things that they're saying. And the third part really is to, in a way, I think someone talked about boundaries just now. I think we do need to say, look, I know you are not happy about certain things and I'm going to address these two things that you said, which makes sense, but I need from you some degree of respect and understanding as we go about responding to uh, what you've just said. And this could be a colleague, could be a customer, could be anyone that we deal with. I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Yes, that is. Yeah. Uh, as you said, you know, someone being nasty, uh, it's in, not in a good place. And a lot of times it's because they have a tremendous amount of fear, which uh, is camouflaged by anger because the fight and flight uh, reactivity comes about. So if we can just get them to just pause and says, okay, how can I help you? Right. How do we move forward from here? It helps them to focus their mind now on the present and going forward. Because a lot of that anger comes from ruminating about what they feel wasn't right. And all the judgments that are clouding their mind, uh, they have actually lost sight of, okay, now what, is, what are our options? So if we can just ask the question, so what are some of the suggestions that you have? Or how do you want me to help you? Yeah. Could be very useful. So there are some wow. questions uh, in the Q&A okay. uh, section. If you'd like to just take a couple of them. Okay. Um, okay. Which would you like me to? Um, 
there is a voting there. So the one that is okay, highest okay. up right now is uh, what okay. if I'm actually happy with the reduced interactions at work because physically in the office is very distracting. <laughs> so this person is probably hoping that working from home. Yeah, when it comes yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 will, I will try and answer that. Okay. Um, I, I'd like to think, okay, the future of the work, I think COVID, okay, this is one of the opportunities that COVID has taught us that actually we can work in many more ways than one. Uh, in fact, I think the future of work and many organizations will consider you know, whether people uh, can have a hybrid work system, whether they can continue working from home for some people. In as many as some people who have become comfortable working from home, uh, there are still people who are waiting to come back to office. First of all, if you're in a service industry uh, like mine, healthcare is a high touch industry. Um, uh, we do want to be in the same space as our, our patients, uh, for, for doctors and nurses, we must be. Uh, um, we have been able to, though, convert some of the interactions by telehealth, teleconsults uh, in healthcare. So even that can be done, you know, uh, but we do need to physically examine our patients from time to time. So we need to adjust that. Now, my colleagues, I would like to share a little, little anecdote. When last year, right, when everyone had to work from home, right, so many people were so distressed <laughs> and they were trying to creep back into office to get their things and to stick around. And now I, I love this comment because it, <laughs> uh, this person has now uh, felt that really uh, become comfortable to staying at home. Um, I think just, just reminds us that, that actually that we should respect the diversity and that people um, um, may benefit from different hybrid work uh, and by arrangements, and I think that will be happen. What will happen in the future? Uh, there's another question that talks about the boss that kills you, not the job. <laughs> I hope the bosses are here. Um, we have an important part to play uh, and a responsibility. Uh, we are we we really are here as leaders to look after our teams. Uh, the responsibility that we have as leaders is not just to the stakeholders or the shareholders of the organization or to the customers. We have a great responsibility to our colleagues and the people who come to work with us and who give us the privilege of leading them. And uh, so I think, you know, get your boss to attend this talk <laughs> and understand what the elements of joy are uh, and that, um, that you know, uh, in that in that wheel that I showed you just now, if you go back to the chart, really there are certain things that uh, uh, leaders and bosses are responsible for providing. They need to provide. I need to provide a safe space for my colleagues to work, a psychological and physically safe space. Uh, I cannot make people work if the environment is full of infection or as a fire hazard. I cannot do that as my responsibility. My job is to make sure that my team understands that um, uh, the purpose of what we're doing and healthcare, I think it's, it, it's quite evident. Uh, and again, to respect uh, my colleagues and listen to them uh, and give them the choice and autonomy to empower them to make uh, daily changes and improvements when they need to. So these are the things that I think uh, bosses should uh, and must do. Thank you. I'm going to just jump in uh, there because uh, sometimes we may feel helpless that because it's our boss, we can't change them. I just like you all to uh, consider where they're coming from. And a lot of times they are coming from a place of fear. Uh, they are fearing that they can't meet their KPIs because you are not uh, playing ball or you're not uh, you know, doing your part. So if, if you have problems with your boss is to go to your boss and say, How, what is it that I can do or what is it that I need to do to uh, win the trust that you seem to lack uh, in, in me? And usually bosses become really obsessive or micromanaging is because they have a lack of trust. They feel that you're not reliable and that you may even be a threat because you may be talking about them very negatively to other people. So they do not see you as someone as being part of their team anymore. So I think you need to have this open conversation. Uh, don't wait for your boss to do it because obviously he or she is not doing it. So you need to take that first step and then you will actually be empowered and you are able to change that relationship. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. Uh, how do you find camaraderie when everyone else loves to overwork and rush? It's not your principle to do that. Uh, I like that one because I think um, I have friends in Japan uh, and this is a problem in Japan, you know, actually Japan, the work culture is that uh, you, if you don't 
uh, the worst, the first person to leave the office is is the worst employee, <laughs> and they all work until you know I don't know ten o'clock at night, and then they go out and uh, and then they go and drink, and then they go home at, at one o'clock, and then the next day again, and people uh, uh, um, um, die from overwork in Japan. You know, I think uh, it's a very serious problem, uh, and thankfully we don't have this problem. Uh, I think we should. Uh, establish this culture that really um, we do need to have work-life balance uh, and that um, um, overworking actually to me sometimes I, I realize is is not very efficient work people who overwork uh, sometimes if I feel I'm overworking I realize it's probably because I'm not sure how to do things I take too long to get things done <laughs> so figure out what it is when when someone is overworking uh, I don't think uh, we we just love to overwork um, and so I think it's okay. Uh, and to reflect this, so when we talk about that joy in work, right? These are the things that can be brought up. Uh, and I find it very, you know, I, I I love my work, but I find it very stressful because I find that people never seem to stop, and they send emails at eleven o'clock and twelve o'clock at night and two o'clock in the morning, uh, and uh, and uh, I find that part sucks out the joy from me. And 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 people say that, and if you recognize this in the team, uh, I think collectively we can respond to say look we won't do that anymore okay even if i and i try i, I personally try i never i never send an email okay i'm not sure if any of my staff are listening if i accidentally send out an email after 10 o'clock i apologize but i try i try i do try not to do that uh and uh, we should not do be overworking in this sense if i cannot finish my work by 10 o'clock at night there's something wrong with the way i'm working actually <laughs> But it's okay if you send out the email, right? We have the uh, choice not to reply or not. To of course, you have email. a choice not to reply. Please, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any of my colleagues that please don't reply if I send an email. I'm sorry, I won't do that. Like, I'll try not to do that again. Uh, yeah. 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 You don't have to reply Prof Chua's email, but he has the freedom to send out that email. So remember, <laughs> I, should, that. I have to respect. Yeah, we have to respect each other. Yeah. Okay. Wow, we've had a wonderful session. I really, I think we should let people go again, attend to their Sunday, Sunday chores and, and activities and family activities. There's another session later on, right? Very soon, actually. Yes, uh, we do at 11 a.m. So yeah, I really we... like to uh, thank you on behalf of everyone here for your very joyful uh, presentation and uh, very inspiring to how we can put more joy into work. So instead of waiting for your bosses to change things or do something, be empowered to change your own circumstances. I mean, in the worst case, yes, you can always quit and find another job. But having said that, sometimes if our habits keep repeating, no matter where we go, we're going to end up being unhappy. So it's good to reflect on ourselves and say, what are the habits that I need to start to adjust that I know how to be happy regardless of everything that's going on? And that way, wherever you go, you'll find that joy because uh, you believe in what you do and you know how to motivate yourself because uh, people often write in their CV, right? I'm a self-motivated person. But many a times, <laughs> there's so much expectation that they want to be appreciated, they want to be affirmed. Uh, that is not self-motivation. Self-motivation is knowing how to affirm yourself, knowing how to appreciate the impact that you create and that you are aware of the impact that you create. So if I may just end with a story, when the days when I used to take a bus to work when I was in my 20s, there was one driver that I always looked forward to because when I get on the bus, he will say, good morning, how are you? And he created an impact, not just driving me from point A to point B, but he made me feel welcome. And that is the kind of impact we can create in whatever job that we do, making our presence felt. And that way, if we ever leave, People know that we're gone and then we know that we have created an impact. <laughs> Fantastic, Angie. Always a delight to speak at your conference. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you everyone for being here.